Anka, the Pearl of the Orient, a destination with golden palm fringe beaches, the frenetic city of Colombo, idyllic mountains, epic train journeys, wildlife and more. It's unlike anywhere else in Asia. Despite everything that's been happening here, the country's tourism industry is rebounding in 2023. Like most Aussies, and like me, you'll start your trip in the city of Colombo, a port city that rushes at you on every corner. Tuk-tuks, traders, mosques, monasteries, and more. My advice? Once you've torn around the city, done all your shopping, and soaked in the atmosphere, getting lost is a must in a city like this. Try your absolute best to get above it, too. Climb to the observation deck of the 356-metre-high Lotus Tower. It's a beacon that stands proud over this city, especially at night. Well clear of the smog and the chaos. Find a patch of grass and join in on a local cricket game. You'll find them everywhere. Or, if you're like me, you'll be just as happy spending the afternoon on the rooftop of the refurbished Radisson Hotel Colombo with the sun setting over the Lacadive Sea in front of the hotel's infinity pool. It's not long before I beelined for Candy, the country's second largest city set around a man-made lake, and as you cruise past the lake on foot, soak in the historical city that was so appealing for curious travellers. It's in Sri Lanka's mountainous centre, as is the new Radisson Candy. The views from every room in this hotel are simply stunning. The weather in Candy is milder, cooler, and somehow thinner. It's a breath of fresh air. If you're here, you're most likely visiting the sacred temple of the Tooth Relic as well, the most sacred site in all of the Buddhist world. It's here that people line up for hours each night just to catch a glimpse of Buddha's actual tooth. The setting is tranquil as you move through the sacred spaces. Take your time, light an oil lamp or a candle, soak it in. Canyon culture, it's everywhere. It's in your face. Dancers wearing rattling anklets, elaborate beads, bangles, masks, and flowing costumes, they flip and somersault and jump while drummers beside them beat in unison. Candy is a mountainous jungle town, and to experience this sort of culture firsthand is heart-thumping and tribal. With tourism numbers still low, we got a special royal kind of treatment at the Pinawala Elephant Sanctuary. There are some 80 orphaned elephants here on this 24 hectare site. I've never been face to face with an elephant, let alone a princess elephant named Kumaria. And moments in travel like this are really rare, especially in 2023. So when they happen, you actually savor it. I think that's one of the most beautiful things about Sri Lanka at the moment. It was like this when I was here in 2017, emerging, raw, untethered and unexpected. Finally, the four square kilometre site of Gore Ford, about a three hour drive south of Colombo, is perhaps the best metaphor for this country's rebirth. You could spend an afternoon wandering the UNESCO site where waves still crash into the fortified cliffs, locals play cricket beneath the ramparts, and crows soar over the iconic lighthouse. This spot is perfect for an afternoon of aimless wanderings, where the light fades and beautiful cafes and restaurants reveal themselves inside Dutch colonial architecture. My hotel, another newly invested in Radisson, is the jewel in this visit. It's big, but it feels like home. And as the sun sets over another impossible horizon, I think to myself, is Sri Lanka ready to have us back? Probably not. But are we ready to have it back? Absolutely. This is one pretty special country.